at 10. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Tonight in the Naugatuck Valley, the cleanup is only beginning, but small communities are rallying together, neighbors helping neighbors. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Crews have been working tirelessly to clear the roads and make sure it's safe for drivers to get around, especially because today was the first day a lot of people could get back to their neighborhoods to assess the damage. And tonight, Governor Ned Lamont is asking the federal government to step up. He drafted a letter earlier asking the president to declare a federal emergency for three counties, Fairfield, New Haven, and Litchfield. Lamont saying it's necessary for public safety since roads are still shut down, has as material has spilled into the waterways and dams were affected. If granted FEMA, the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers would come to the Naugatuck Valley for relief. What Fox 61 News crews saw today, though, businesses, homes, schools filled with mud and debris, roads, impassable, residents scrambling to find family mementos in the rubble and the water. We have live team coverage tonight. Kaylee Collins joined a group that's feeding the waterlogged town of Oxford. But first, Jake Garcia is in Oxford, where crews welcomed today's drier weather so they could start clearing the roads. So, Jake, tell us uh, what you saw there before the sunset tonight. Well, Brent and Sarah, a lot of uh, the surrounding area towns, their public works department working really hard uh, before the sun went down. Uh, we saw crews even packing uh, some pothole areas along uh, the roads here uh, with gravel just to make sure drivers uh, could get through OK and safely. We also saw a lot of this, a lot of road closures. And this is just one of the many of the roads that Connecticut Department of Transportation is looking to uh, fix very quickly uh, after this weekend's historic floods. Floodwaters in southwest Connecticut caused major damage, washing away more than two dozen state roads, with even more local roads now needing repair. The director of communications for the Connecticut Department of Transportation says crews have been hard at work. You know, so over the last 24 hours, we went from you know more than 25 state roads being closed due to flooding. Uh, we've cut that down to about 14 or 15. Today. So, While some roads have reopened, others need long-term repairs. So we're still doing an inventory of the structures that were impacted, the roadways uh, which were damaged uh, as we chart a path forward. But we know that there are going to be certain priority areas like Route 34 on either side of the Stevenson Dam that are going to need extensive repairs. Other priority roads include Routes 53 and 37. The DOT says it's still too early to know how long the repairs might take. Well, you know, we're still probably several days away from being able to have more of a clearer picture of what our next steps are. Officials are looking at all possibilities, including opening roads up to one lane if possible and building temporary bridges. Pretty much everything is on the table at this point. Contact with contractors, with vendors, uh, the companies that can produce and install these temporary type structures. We just have to make sure that it works. Uh, and it works for Connecticut. Meanwhile, officials urge drivers to obey road closure signs. Just because a road looks safe to drive doesn't mean it is. Obviously, we're not going to open up a roadway uh, if there's been undermining. You know, if the uh, you know the top of the asphalt looks like it's fine, but the substructure is not. Uh, so we're going to keep things closed until we can get repairs in place. And I know you can't see it out there right now, but there is a hole in the street with a car inside of it. And we've throughout the day, we've seen people going beyond these road closure signs over the barriers to the very edge uh, just to see what's going on. And that's what the Connecticut Department of Transportation is telling people not to do because a lot of these roads are still unstable. Now, as for drivers, you can follow the latest road closures on state roads at ctroads.org. Reporting live in Oxford, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Jake, thank you. Yeah, you got to be safe out there. Another part of the story tonight is how communities are rallying together and happening in Oxford. One taco shop making sure no one goes hungry, going the extra mile to the parts of town where people are stuck. Fox 61's Kaylee Collins is live there after witnessing firsthand how this small town comes together in a big way in tough times. Kaylee. Well, Brent, what started as one business's small effort to help turned into several residents banding together to offer some support and some much needed hot meals to their neighbors who've been stuck inside of their homes since this all went down on Sunday. 
This town always comes together. Um, the people are phenomenal. This is a wonderful town. The Oxford community and beyond have banded together as storm cleanup continues. People from all over are looking for ways to help, including Brantford based urban taco company and folks from Stormy's in Shelton. They made the trip to Oxford to offer free meals to first responders and anyone impacted by flooding damage. We're here till, you know, until we run out of food. Free takeout quickly turned into delivery service after one resident told them 10 families stranded on one street were in need of a hot meal. Neighbors and urban taco staff traveling off the beaten path to offer assistance. Um, that way. There's, that's, there's a family with three young children. Yep. There. Thanks to some help from town workers that laid gravel down a pathway, residents who have been cooped up in their homes since Sunday got some fresh hot tacos. Everybody stood up for us and it's yeah. fantastic. I mean, the support we've gotten yeah. is unbelievable. The drop off was made to one residence on East Hill Road where neighbors would distribute to the other families who haven't been able to leave their houses. The outpouring of support is top rate first class. It is. It really is. And we want to get out and go help other people. And people just really unite and Uniting, there's always strength in numbers, and I, I think we have a lot of st strength here in, in Oxford as well as in the Valley. Um, so as far as when something's wrong, we all come up and come forward and, and do what needs to be done. Definitely heartwarming to see these folks come together, and there are several other events scheduled to offer some assistance to people in town. Coming up this week, another uh, community meal giveaway is happening tomorrow here at the Quarry Walk in Oxford. On Thursday night, there's going to be a first responder recognition ceremony on the green here, and there's also an event scheduled on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, also here on the green at the Quarry Walk, to offer some assistance from experts in insurance and contractors, things like that, to see if they can offer any kind of help to those in need here in town. Live in Oxford tonight, Kaylee Collins, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Kaylee, thank you. It uh, was good to see. Good I know, to see that's those people awesome. I'd go a little stir crazy being trapped, so it's good that they're sure got, having are. some visitors. Yeah. yeah, hungry too. All right, mm -hmm. uh, and after talking about all this rain and flooding for days now, mm -hmm. boy, it sure was nice that it was so quiet out there today. Yeah, quiet, dry, humidity has even gone down, and that little breeze out there tonight, Rachel, or today even felt like a little taste of fall. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. We've got this little preview that's ongoing, and yes, we are talking about mostly dry, weather in the days ahead, which is a good change, not something that we just want to see, but something that we need to help people get back up and running and clean up after Sunday's catastrophic flooding. So the next couple of days are going to feel kind of like today did. We've got temperatures right now that are anywhere between 7 to as much as 15 degrees cooler compared to this exact time yesterday. Right now we're already at 53 degrees in Waterbury, 64 for the New Haven area and 56 in wind at Wyndham rather and I think by daybreak tomorrow we're going to see some 40s out there so it is going to be a cooler start to the day likely the coolest start that we've seen in a couple of months overnight low temperatures will be dropping back into the 40s to low 50s and as we head through the day tomorrow we'll start off with beautiful sunshine in the morning heading into the afternoon we will see more clouds and there is a chance for an isolated shower in the afternoon or early evening we've got really cold air above our heads and there might even be a little small hail in a couple of those little showers that pop up highs around 70 degrees so cooler than average and another cool night tomorrow night we'll talk about a weekend warm-up as this generally nice stretch of weather that we're entering continues coming up all right rachel thank you we have a sad update now on breaking news. We first brought you at six police in Plymouth now say a young boy has died after being pulled unconscious from a pool. Mm -hmm. Police were called to a home on Magnolia Lane in the Terryville section of town around noon. The child was unresponsive when they arrived. They transported him by helicopter to Bristol Hospital, but he was pronounced dead. The official cause of death has not been determined. The chief medical examiner is now investigating. Blackstone Memorial Library in Branford has finally gotten the all clear. Apparently someone emailed staff a bomb threat. Staff immediately called police. We're told everyone is safe, although they had to evacuate the building. Surrounding streets were also closed, so teams could have space to sweep the area. Overall, though, nothing was found. The incident is still under investigation. And to
Bristol business is closed for the foreseeable future after a flatbed truck slammed through the front of their building. Jimmy's on the River is sharing these pictures on Facebook. The crash happened yesterday. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but this is the second time this restaurant has had a vehicle go flying through their front door in just two years. They were still in the process of repairing and renovating after the first time. No word on when they can reopen, and it's not clear what caused the driver to crash.